Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. We got a real fun video for you today titled Has One Value versus Has One Filter. The battle of two DEX functions. I don't really expect any one of those functions to win, but hopefully we will learn how those two functions are different and when it's a good idea to use one versus the other. As always, I have a super simple data set for us to explore, but it's just complicated enough for me to make a point so that you guys don't get don't have to hung up on all of the data and we can s jump straight into the issues we're trying to address. So let's take a look at this data set. As you can see, we have a sales data set where we're tracking sales performance across multiple markets, across several products, different customers, and we're capturing sales across two variables. We're capturing sales in local currency and we're capturing sales in United States dollars. Here we're looking at a table that represents the very same data set. Uh, all I'm doing is using a matrix control to drill down by market, customer, and product. And then we're looking at sales in local currency versus sales in US dollars. The problem we're trying to solve is the following. Because we're capturing data in multiple currencies, what we want to do is when we are displaying multiple markets at the same time, we would like everything to be shown in US dollars because that's the only way uh, our totals will add up. However, if I pick only one market in my slicer, then I would like all of the data to be shown in the local currency only. So one market selected show local currency, multiple markets selected show US dollars. Our data model could not be any simpler we have our sales table that you guys already saw before, and that's just connected to a, a dimension uh, lookup table for all the markets. You, would also, you will also notice a fancy metrics table. I always advocate that all measures should not live on any business tables. You should always create a metrics table for your metrics. So that's what I did. I created a smart sales metric that is expected to be smart enough to show things in local currency for single market and consolidated US currency for multiple markets. If you would like to know how to create this nifty metrics table, you could search for how to create metrics table videos on our channel, or if I don't forget, I'll put one, I'll put a link to one in the description of this video. So let's take a look at the V1 of the calculation. And if you see how this works, it's really very simple. What we do is we say if has one value, market market, then show everything in local currency. And if more than one value is selected, show everything in US dollars. So let's see if this works. So to make things easier and to make it easier to, to test, all of the local currency sales are always $100. And then all of the US dollars um, are not. So we can always see by just looking at the, at the values and the total, whether we're working with local currency or US dollars. So right now we see that our smart sales is identical to sales in USD. That's the behavior we would expect because we, we do not have a single selection. So um, our measure, let's have that measure up again. So what our measure says, okay, only when there is one value selected for market market, use local currency. In our case, we have three values selected, so it's using USD. So you could probably say, okay, well, it's working. Why do you even bother with has one filter? Well, hold your horses, we'll get to it. So let's just make sure that it works if I have one market selected. So let's say I'm gonna select Canada, and here you go. We see that now Canada is showing everything in local currency. So again, one market, local currency, more than one market, US dollars. So let me select Canada and France, and bam, right away we're switching from local currency to US dollars. So it's kind of working. Let me break it for you. So the way I'm gonna break this function is very easy. I'm gonna change our relationship between sales and market from single to both. So here I am switching it from single to both. Click OK, and now let's see how our, how our measure works. As you can see, we have two markets selected. However, everything is still showing in local currency, other than the total. 
So as you can see, the total matches the sales in US dollars, yet individual records are matching sales in local currency. So for somebody who is not very experienced in Power BI, you would be saying, okay, something is broken. This is a bug in Power BI, because if you add the smart sales up, obviously they all end with zero. There's no way in hell they're gonna add up to 615, yet here we are. All I've done was change the type of a relationship that we have, and now our total is completely wrong. So if there's one thing you should learn from this video already, is that the type of the relationship matters a lot. So when you create your relationships in your model, you do have to think about what kind of relationship it is, whether it's single or both. And let me explain why changing it to both broke our measure. So if you want to understand why this is broken, let's take a look at how this matrix is set up. Turns out the way I set it up was I was using the columns from the sales table. I was not using the market from the dimension table. I was using it from the fact table. So as this table is being painted, as this matrix is being painted, it's only using the sales table to, to go into the rows and columns. So when I use a market value to go into this column, that is a column from the sales table. And when the relationship is not both, bringing a sales market in here does not filter the market dimension. Even though for each record, we're only looking at one market at a time, that one market does not effectively go back and filter the market dimension. So the part of our calculation that's checking for one value in the market does not get triggered, never returns true. The minute we changed our relationship to both, me placing the market in the rows of this matrix at the same time filters the market in the dimension. So for every row of the sales table, we're only able to see one row of the market table, which is why we're always showing everything in local currency. As far as when Power BI is painting this number here for product one, customer one, Canada, at that second, at that moment, it can only see one market. So for this cell, it's using local currency, even though we'll, we have two values selected in our slicer. Why do we have our total matching to the total in US dollars? Well, because when it's showing the total, it's able to see the entire table, the entire sales table, and therefore entire sales table will allow us to see entire market table. So when we look at one row at a time, we see one market record from the sales table, and it goes back and filters the market dimension table, and therefore our has one value gets triggered. So that's why we end up with local currency in details and USD in sum. Now let's go ahead and fix this so that regardless of the relationship that we have, our calculation will always work. So it turns out our fix is very easy. All we have to do is change our has one value to has one filter. And now miraculously everything works even though I have not done anything to our relationship. Why does this work? So in what I mean by work, we see that everything is now displayed in US dollars, including the sum. So the reason that works is because has one filter is going to take a look at the market column in the market table and see how many values are being explicitly filtered. Not implicitly filtered through a relationship, but explicitly filtered by me clicking on the either a slicer or a filter. So in my case, I, am, I have two values selected, therefore has one filter will return false, therefore everything will be shown in US dollars. If I were to pick US, UK, you see that UK, now I have one selection and everything is shown in local, in local currency. So multiple selections, US dollars, individual selection, local currency. So that is the big difference between has one value and has one filter. Has one value returns yes if only one value is visible, regardless of how that value is being filtered, whether it's an explicit filter or implicit filter due to a relationship. When we're here in this report page, somehow we have to know whether I'm explicitly filtering anything in my slicer. And the best function to get the explicit, the direct filter is to use has one filter function. Well, this is it for today. Hope you guys learned everything there is to know about has one value versus has one filter, and you're more comfortable 
picking the right one, giving your specific scenario. Hope you found this video super interesting and informative, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys come back very, very soon. Bye.